chapter 6, verses 1 to 8, and can be found on page 691 of the Church Bibles. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him was seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And the Gospel reading is John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17, and can be found on 1065 in the Church Bibles. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, <clears throat> who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they can't enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks very much, Jackie. May my words be in name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, one notice I should add, on Wednesday we were having our usual service at 10 o'clock, but as it's the fifth Wednesday in the month, it's going to be at Bourne End. So, and you're very welcome to come along to this service. <coughs> you wouldn't believe it, but I'm actually part of a very musical family. The only problem is I can't sing and I can't play any instrument. So all the music gifts seem to have bypassed me at all. My father and brother-in-law were very good violin players. They've left me a mu their music library since both of them have passed on several years ago. I've now passed that music library on to one of my grandsons because he's doing music at university. I went to a concert a few months ago where he was playing in the orchestra. A great piece of music carries us away with its beauty and emotion. And if asked to describe music, I would have expressed it in terms of wonder and joy, very much penetrating the depths, the depths of my being. There are also two other descriptions of music. As I was saying, I had a music library which I handed over to my grandson. Well, on the paper, it contains lots of marks on the pieces of paper. Five lines with dots and tails at intervals along and between the lines. That's a correct description. Or I could give them a scientific description. Music is different wavelengths of sound at different time intervals. Now, both these latter descriptions are correct, but a bit incomplete. They are important. If you're writing a piece of music, you'd have a permanent record. Or if you're designing uh, and making musical instruments, you need to know quite a bit about sound wavelengths. Today is Trinity Sunday. The doctrine of the Trinity may at first appear like describing music as may a notes on a piece of paper or different sound wavelengths. For most of us, that would be boring. But it's incomplete. We've all got very different experiences of God. I'd like to consider three pictures. The first of all is really a set of pictures, but it starts with today's Old Testament reading, this vision of Isaiah of God in the temple. The Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted. The seraph singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. And the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds um, at the temple vibrate. We may have experienced something of the glory of God in God's creation. The sky at night. Do you know, I missed seeing the northern lights. I've missed them twice. When I went out to look in the early hours of the morning, last week was the week before I saw nothing. And even worse, I went to Iceland specifically to see the Northern Lights. We didn't go because it was covered with cloud. But well, that was a glory of God's creation or the beauty of the countryside around us. It's so beautiful here, coming here from Surrey where I had the M25 almost through my back garden. And I very much appreciated the beauty of the countryside. And the weed growing in the fields, of course, is our food. All well, the many holidays I've spent in Cornwall, particularly at night, uh, in the winter, 
seeing the dramatic and wonderful coastline in a storm. Something there about the majesty of God. Then the second picture, we look at Jesus Christ. Oh, now, New Testament reading, Nicodemus said, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform signs you are doing if God were not with him. Well, Nicodemus was certainly drawn to Jesus. He didn't go quite far enough. He didn't recognize Jesus completely for who he was. And of course, we see the story of Jesus very much in his incarnation, his life, his death, his resurrection and ascension. Indeed, we see Jesus as the Son of God. Or our third picture is God is here today in the spirit of the risen Christ. We feel God's presence and see signs of his presence. Jesus said to Nicodemus, and interesting in these words, please note that the words wind and spirit are the same words in the original Greek. The wind blows where it pleases. You hear its sound and you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. We see evidences of God at work today. We experience God at work in the Holy Spirit, in, his, in the lives of people and communities. And so we should be experiencing God in our lives. And those three pictures very much bring out first God, our maker, our creator. And secondly, God, our savior in Jesus Christ. And thirdly, God, our life giver in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we very much proclaim today on this Trinity Sunday, we particularly remember, we believe in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now in the fourth century, Christians were accused of believing not in one God, but three gods. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But the Christian thinkers and the church came up with the doctrine of the Trinity. We believe in one God, but three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, the debates in the fourth century got a bit complicated. They used words like essence, substance, and persons. And the words in Latin and Greek have different meanings and reflect the philosophy, philosophical thinking of those days. But it was a very important debate that went on because they were very much defending the truth of the Christian faith. And there were great defenders of the faith in those days. Two I'd pick out, Athanasius, who was Bishop of Alexandria in Egypt, and Augustine of Hippo. That's not Augustine of Canterbury, it's a different Augustine, who was Bishop of uh, Hippo in North Africa. These were great defenders of the faith, and they wrote texts as well, both of which I had to read in my student days. It's also worth noting, both Athanasius and Augustine came from Africa. And where is the Christian faith strongest today? In Africa. Incidentally, we had a male cat in the vicarage of Potmend. We called him Petroc Athanasius Augustine. Petroch is the patron saint of Cornwall, Athanasius, the great bishop, and, Athen and Augustine. Well, they certainly stand out, Athanasius and Augustine, in the history and thinking of the Christian church as great defenders of the faith. There is an irony in this. Paul, at first, wouldn't have understood the doctrine of the Trinity. But... We think of the prayer of the grace at the end of the second letter to the Corinthians, which we use so much in our worship. And this helps us to understand the depths of the what the doctrine of the Trinity represents. 
The saving grace of the Son gives access to the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And so we very much pray as Christians to God the Father in the name of Jesus God's Son and in the power of God the Holy Spirit. And so we boldly proclaim we believe in one God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let's now stand and we'll proclaim our faith.